929.70. Hey guys, how's it going? Are these codes? How's it going? Howdy, howdy. I hear Discord going off. How do I do that? I don't know how I do that. Hmm. How's it going? I'm here. I'm just looking to see if I can add something. I don't know how to do it like like Twinkle does. She adds these little gifs into our Maybe I can add that. Let's see. <laughs> okay, I did attempted. I think I added something. Live talk at ask, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hey, MK. Yep, Travis here. We've got um, a friend over named Vinny. He's um, very much a Vinny. His mom named him well. <clears throat> His name's Vincent, but we call him Vinny. And he's hanging out with uh, James and Travis. My mom's here. I'm doing good, Annie. How are you guys? Hey, Contour. Hey, MK. I hope everybody's doing good. I am still updating a few tiny little details in... Um, medicine section before I post it up. 929.86. Okay. These are the balloon plasties, the repairs. Yep, yep, yep. So mitro is one difference, and then pulmonary is another difference. And then <clears throat> this one is through the skin. And a repair of the aortic valve. This one is mitra valve. This is the pulmonary valve. It's a very cool. Okay, no worries. I'll say hi to my mom too. Yep, she's here. Um, I'm trying to get her a little bird bath going out in the front yard, and the pump. I had the electrician come out and put in electricity so we can run an electric pump so the water isn't stagnant and we don't have to keep an isolator in there. It can just keep pumping. Anyway, um, the electrical pump that I got for the fountain won't go through the hole. The plug-in part won't go through the hole that the pump provides or the or the fountain provides. Anyway, it's too fat. It's crazy. So you got to be specific. You bought one of those turnable book stands. I made mine. I love it. I used um, Auntie CC. She let me know I could get this Lazy Susan from Amazon. And then I got these two book things that I can put 
that are separate, they're made out of wood. And then I just bought some Velcro and Velcroed these suckers down to the um, table and it works just great. Oops, I gotta put my camera down for just a second, but I love it. I only have one book up there right now. It's last year's CPT book right now because, come on camera, um, I'm working through this year's CPT book notes and I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything from last year's notes when I updated this year's notes because I'm putting a whole bunch of different information in it as far as what's different in each code. That's different, but some of the examples or vocabulary that I may have had that was really good at the bottom I don't want to miss it or what the major arteries and stuff like that all the little tips that were up there that's different from the way I do the codes this year so just making sure that I've got everything that I had last year on to this year's should we add modifier 59 let me see what did you say was there something else to go along with that? Thank y'all for all the hearts already and sharing this live to get it out to other people. Um, I'm glad you're doing fine, Annie. Hey, Sanchez, how's it going? Should we add modifier 59 to what, Buffy? Thanks for the follow. I didn't get one as big, but it will be, it will be one-sided. This one's got an, I think it's an 18 inch turntable on it. I've got my cat laser beam so I can get them distracted that Travis stole from somebody else's house. I have to get it back to those people. <laughs> He's so bad. He did that last weekend. That's what he brought back to me. So that's why it's right there to remind me to go give it back. Anyway, um, kids are funny. But I love my little turntable. It works great. I just used uh, Auntie Cece's mom's advice and did it just that way. I have the links for all the Amazon um, items that I used um, in our discord group under what to expect on exam day if you scroll up uh, back through the conversations I've got all the Amazon links there so it works out great thank Miss B for the roses your money here or gifts on TikTok turn into money that is given away free notes to people um, that are in need and I do have a couple of people that have requested some saying they're in need of some help. And could I send them um, some notes? So let's see. I may go bigger later, but for right now, 12 inches is good. Aw, that's awesome. I think it'll work great. You can use... Um, you don't have to get wood, too. You can get plastic and get out a lot cheaper, too. I think this was 40 bucks altogether, somewhere around there, plus free shipping. So, hey, Sanchez, just got home too. Oh, I'm doing good. Today was a good day. I slept in. I shouldn't have because I was supposed to be tutoring with Miss Edwards. Hopefully, she'll forgive me. I just could not. One of those days where you just cannot get out of bed by 7 a.m., it's just not going to happen. I just couldn't. So, I slept in. And so that made the day really good. I cleaned some grout in the kitchen and cooked dinner. Awesome. I haven't cooked dinner in like three months. Seriously, I haven't. If I don't order it or my oldest son doesn't cook, then I haven't been cooking. The kids have been fending for themselves. So I actually cooked dinner today. So feeling great. Yours is metal. Yep, it's a Lazy Susan. It is. It's just a Lazy Susan and a book stand two of them that's all and just some three dollar velcro that's it works great miss b i have a message into alex from aapc um here he is right here and alex's reply is that hi jen let me look into it and that was wednesday i sent him that video that i made of the sticky note 
and asked him specifically. We we talk all the time, so that's nothing new. So I'm sure he will look into it. It's just AAPC is run by a bunch of committees, and they will have to run it through committees. It will be forever before I get a reply, I'm assuming. But, you know, my my thoughts on this is reading the rules and being very specific to stay within the rules is that they do not want you using sticky notes to create more space, more writable space, because this can cover up an entire printed book area if I was to do this and put that over this and create a whole new space for writing. What my transparent notes are intended use is to not create more writing space, but to be able to, to trace a drawing from an anatomy book and be able to just move that picture and place it on available writable space. I could draw this picture, probably not as well as I could trace it and put it on the same spot, but my preference is to use this transparent sticky note and I cut it down too. I cut it to shape so that it could fit there and I don't have a problem with it but I'm not on AAPC's um, committee of stuff and I see it as per perfectly reasonable thing to do for a few anatomy pictures. Why not? Um, I think it's a great idea and because sometimes it's very difficult to draw in an a particular body part. I was trying to draw some skulls and they look like little mushroom pops uh, the other day and I had to get Travis over to draw them in the book. So um, I think it's a very reasonable thing to do. I am waiting on AAPC to let me know and they will when they shoot it through all the committees. Be right back. My children got really quiet. Let me see what they're doing. What are you doing? Watching. Oh, good. I want to see it too. Okay. So they're watching the new Doctor Strange, and Travis is in the bathroom. I figure he's doing something nefarious, but anyway. Not heard from him yet, so we'll see. It's never a good sign. Well, it's a committee. It's it's a committee. I'm sure um, they'll have to outweigh the benefits versus um, people get creative. You give them an inch and they'll take a mile and do something crazy with it. But I don't see what harm it could be. It's transparent. We're not creating new writable space, but we'll see. <laughs> I hope y'all are good. I wanted to talk about, um, everybody keeps saying, know your guidelines, know your guidelines. And that's just like a broad thing that we, we know it. It's just, it, it could be a little bit what they mean by that. What do you mean by that? How do you find the guidelines? How do you know which ones are good to, to know? And, one of the patterns I'm seeing in a lot of AAPC's exam questions um, for the certification is they like to know if, if something in the book is listing out four or five things that are inside something else, like one code has, which is a cardio version but what is inside that cardio version? So if you're talking about some of those wordy questions that are guideline related, um, 
where they like to find their answers are going to be um, places that I've their parentheses in these guidelines just like this a lot of times they are in the parentheses so um, the the major vessels right here that are part of coronary disease they list out which ones these major coronary arteries the branches the graphs right here these codes for angioplasty What's included when they say the word angioplasty? What's included in it is a balloon, the cutting of the balloon, the wired balloons, cryoplasty. It's all included. They love this stuff because like one of their questions would be, what, which one of these is not included in angioplasty? And they'll list this out as A, this out as B, this out as C, and then D or one of the other ones might be balloon expandable or whatever, but that's in an orthoectomy, which is different than an art angioplasty. So knowing where to look in all these little, he the, the headers and in the guidelines, if they're listing out anything that's in a header, that's where they're going to pull one of those questions, one of those wordy ones. Which one is not in? Which one is in? Those kind of things. We were working on a physical therapy question last week, last live. Where's physical therapy? Uh, things like this. This right here where the athletic training evaluations, what's included in that evaluation? Right here, they're telling us four different bullet points. Well, one of AAPC's questions could be for athletic training evaluations, which one of these is not? So then you just need to go to your guideline right there, look for your bulletin points and look for one of the answers that is not. How do you find where the guideline is dur Oops, sorry. <laughs> during the middle of your exam when you've picked out a, um, when you've got a question like angioplasty, what's included in it? Don't forget you've got an alphabetical list in the back of the book back here and we can go find angioplasty which will give you a CPT range to go to once you get there you can find it some chapters you don't need to do that because they're super small like anything in pulmonary uh, um, I mean in um, respiratory is super small because that chapter is only 10 pages and you can just skim until you find the right header that you're looking for and then that could tell you where your guideline is. Um, usually one of their guidelines that they're going to be talking about was, let's see, one of their questions is in cardiovascular and they're asking about if we're doing this kind of procedure what how do we bill it and some of your billing guidelines are in these actual coding guidelines right here we bill it separately maybe billed separately if you're doing a non-selective or selective vascular catheterizations, they want to know, can you combine it with something else or do you have to report it separately? Stuff like that is usually found in the last sentence of the guideline. So whatever their question happens to be about, the billing part of it is usually the last sentence, which is something you should pay attention to. I should have marked that one in my notes. Um, I'm trying to find the specific question that I had recently come up. 
I can't remember the main term to be able to look it up to see what page it's on. So I just have to see that chapter and then I'll know that's what I'm talking about. So bear with me just a second and see if I can't find another one just like that. That's exactly what they're, look at this one. This one says, come on. Come on, camera. Come on. You can you can focus. I promise you can. There we go. There we go. Not to be reported separately. Some of those final sentences, we're under the header of what are we coding here? Venus. not reported. I have to go get Travis. He's being inappropriate. I'll be right back. I'm sorry, guys. You come here. Now, I didn't give you an option. There was no reason to say what to me. You're going to be appropriate around your company and around my mother. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. What? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Say hello to everybody on TikTok. Hello, Travis. He's eating, eating a piece of bread. <laughs> oh. On page uh, 307 of the 2022 book, things like this. You saw in that other example, example it said to be reported separately. This one says not to be reported separately. These are sometimes some of the, the wordy or guideline questions that they ask, and it's difficult to know, well, I don't know if it's to be billed separately or not. Well, the, usually the answer will be the last sentence in your guidelines for that particular section. I'm looking for one more example. Right here. Uh, uh, to repair. No, that's not it. But I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. I know it's a repair of something. Look at that one not reported separately another one this one's under the header of endovascular repairs and abdominal aorta this is page 282 but the final word on what to finally is the last paragraph right there off, off of four or five columns of freaking notes about it about what's going on, how to bill it, and all that stuff. But that last sentence over there, that's where they would grab one of those guideline, wordy questions, something that's more difficult to know where the heck. This one says not reported separately, but if they're doing an endograph, it may be reported separately. So there's very close but very different meanings to some of these and some of those small details are super important this is a balloon angioplasty is not reported separately but then the endograph which is a graph it makes sense that you can report those with an additional code so it's self-explanatory but then again it's kind of confusing too if you are under stress so it's nice to be able to find it and be able to know where it's at so you just go look in the back of the book with the index and go look for endovascular repair it'll tell you what CPT code it starts on which it'll be right here and that's where the guideline is is right before it This right here is giving us a whole list of a bunch of things. 
in one thing being done, that could be very important. Interventional procedures uh, for an endovascular abdominal aorta aneurysm could include which of the following? Which one is not part of it? Well, you've got the list right here if you know where to find that particular guideline. So there's all the interventions that they can do. That kind of stuff is where they look for some of those guidelines. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Shows you a little bit more of an insight on where they might come up with some particular answers or questions. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I'd love to show y'all just in case it was part of one of those guidelines that might be important. But that's where I'm finding a lot of their answers to some of their questions, their wordy ones for sure. All right, I need to go back to 92998. Let's go back there, 929, right in here. I was working on these, 92998. And I had something down here I wanted to add, I think. 928941. No, 929700. I did that. 92941. Let's see. We're going to be near 92920. Of course, they're all different locations. Okay, right here. Yes. We got 92940 acute. It's 92941. Before I lose my thought, 92941. Revasculate. It's of an occlusion. Revasculate of an occlusion. Acute and. And PCI with AMI. And then we've got our LD means um, left descending. We got RC for our right coronary. Um, we could add that our right coronary branches equal posterior descending and posterior atrial and our LM and RI branches no add-on codes. I don't know dude I don't know if I can trust you out there to be appropriate you're just trying to show out in front of Vinny uh -uh. yeah you are or I you wouldn't be using that, that language I around my mother you said something you didn't mean to say around grandma well that is inappropriate you can't be saying stuff that you can't say around grandma anyway it's not appropriate and it's not cool it's not fun it's very, um, I, was talking to James. I, was I know, but it doesn't matter. Even if you're talking to your brother, it's simple minded to talk in language that you can't speak around your grandmother. Even in normal conversation with your friends and brothers, you should speak with purpose and not simple mindedness. It's not cool. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. The more creative your language is and less common and foul it is, the higher regard people will have of you anyway, which is cool. You don't want to be just a simple minded person repeating stuff that everybody else says. Be creative. Because I know you are. Look at that artwork that you do. And you were the first one to be able to read in kindergarten. You have a better vocabulary than that. You can even spell better than James. So please use the tools that you have in that brain of yours. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Don't let me catch you talking like that around my mother. Yeah. She's never heard anything like that out of my mouth, ever. Yeah. Mm, 
tear him up. All right. Where am I at? Questions. Let's get some. You can share the best or the worst experiences that you've had all week. Oh, TikTok's telling me to do that? Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> this is the best experiences. I love hanging out with you guys. I'm thinking about doing this for career change. Does this start off easier? Looks overwhelming. Yes, it does. I'm doing very, very high level of um, talk right now. This is for if you didn't pass and you're retaking your exam, where you would find some of the hidden answers. But it would only be for you if you are getting the more difficult exam, which is exam C, and it's a more high technical exam. Most of the time, most people get exam A, B, H, or some of the other versions, which are super simple. Um, not super simple, but they're easier. Um, I'm just giving some high-level details of where some of the rules might be it's usually the very beginning of the, the, the guideline where some of this stuff is, especially if they're listing out multiple things, and then the ending of the guideline where it says how to bill it. Um, but again, most people don't even need to know this information to pass the exam. This um, is usually a whole lot easier than this. It was just happened to be sharing some information with um, MK and some of the others that are struggling to, um, they keep getting exam C, and it's a little bit more technical than, than that, and uh, they're going to be good. I'm going to show off some practice questions now. i got to get out my ICD-10 book. I don't have it on my wheel, which I need to have. But I can definitely teach you how to pass this exam with no medical background, no coding background, no coding courses. You, anybody can pass this exam. We just have to do some book prep. Once we get done with our book prep, then we need to practice these questions and get a feel for what they're asking for out of each section. So let me get my bookie down. It's a great career to try to get into because you'll never hurt for a job. There's always somebody needing a coder. Usually much better benefits than most other places. Um, usually a wide variety of different jobs that you can get. And it can pretty much be tailored to whatever you have done in the past. If you've been anything in the computer field, you can always get a job, even with the people that make the um, medical records, electronic medical records, and be beta testing those records to see if the codes match up link and leak appropriately with different um guidelines and stuff. It's really cool. I've done some of that before. Think positive. Yes, yes, yes. Go easy to difficult. Yep, they sure do. Hey moms, how's it going? Hey ES ESP, it's good to see you. Your exam is on Sunday. Linda, don't stress too much. Um, apparently you're probably going to take it online. Logging on um, can be very stressful and, and getting the proctor on and following their rules. Sometimes there's technical difficulties. Just try not to stress too much. Start 30 minutes ahead. Start trying to log on to Blackboard and Examity or whatever the process is now. And um, when it asks for a password for your exam, that's where you're supposed to hold and wait because your proctor will um, put in the password. So... Just try to get on, logged on early. I was mentally strong. Yeah. 
MK's got this. She's going to be a great coder. She already is. The exam is just very, very um, tricky. And I am here to teach y'all the tricks to get around their darn exam. So, I like looking for similarities. And I see that we have two answers that are 82. I don't want you looking at the questions or reading the questions. A lot of times we can avoid even looking at the questions altogether, and we can pick out the answer just by knowing what the answers say. There's a lot of answers that are going to be, we're going to be able to get rid of because we just wouldn't code those two numbers together because the books tell us you can't code that one with that one. It would be inappropriate to do it. So we let the codes tell us what the answer is instead of letting the question tell us what the answer is because the questions are full of propaganda, missing or uh, misleading information. Um, so we are just going to avoid the questions. I always recommend going straight to the answers. If I go to T82, where the code starts, where the very first T82 is, we will get where T82 O is, we will get a list of what the seventh character is. And that can also tell us whether we're going to be an A or a B. So S82 I see A is for initial, and what would we find is B? B is not listed as a possible seventh character, so that means I know my answer is going to be D, because B is not listed. So I'm at T82. You have to go to the very beginning code. You can't go down to the subcodes where other codes go. But if you start at where T82 starts, it'll give you a list of what's appropriate for a seventh character. B is not listed. I know there's two here. There's a difference between the 41 and the 43. That's all fine and dandy, but that seventh character, there is no B. And I know they're trying to make me confused between the 41 and the 43. I wouldn't even need to go down to that level to look at that difference because B wouldn't be an option. What do you think? So B is wrong. So even just knowing that, I know that D is going to be my answer. Because the Z code and the other code are not similar. AAPC has a habit of picking two answers that are super similar. There's a difference, and there's a reason why there's a difference there. They want to know if you, as a coder, know the difference in those two codes. But without even looking at the question, I would pick D for this one and move on to my next question. Now, y'all can read it, and y'all can... See what y'all think of it. Oh, do I have it? I need to pull up my stuff. Hold on. So y'all can see the whole question. There we go. If you want to, it's just a leaky catheter. And then you can go down to the 41 and the 43 and see what your differences are. I didn't even turn to those pages. <clears throat> um, 41 is a breakdown of a vascular device. 43 is a leakage of a dialysis. And that's exactly what we're doing is leakage. <clears throat> so super simple on that one. Yes, best wishes for Linda. We hope she does so well. I think, I think, yeah, we'll do this one. This one's OB, labor and delivery. 
So right away, you know, C just looks like it's such an outlier. It's nothing like the other ones that start out with the 036. So I would get rid of that right away. They all end in the same code, which is nice. And then we have a difference between each of the diagnosis codes. If we want to go down to the 90 or the 20 and the 21. So I'm assuming it's just a difference between the 20 and the 21, a difference between A and B. So that would eliminate D for me. What's our difference between the 21 and the 20? Before I even decide to even maybe look at the question, let's go look at that. So 0, 36, take me just a minute. I'm doing it one-handed, 36. Eight, three, yep, 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 two, two, O, oh, and two, one. They're both fetal anemia for thrombopenia, one's first trimester, and one is unknown trimester, right? What's our zero stand for? Not applicable or unspecified. So we need to see if the doctor stated that the patient was in the first trimester or not. Yep. So let's see. Does the patient let's say Doc doesn't say which trimester, but as a coder, we should know which trimester they would be in for the 25 weeks. But are they, are, did they determine in the ultrasound that there was a fetus? They do fit a slow heartbeat because Brady girls are slow in the fetus. So we do have the 25 weeks. So right now on the ICD-10 book, we're on page 923. Mm -hmm. Her other complaint R O O O O nine unspecified topic molar five two two five two two ah her age. What makes a high-risk pregnancy? You remember your guidelines for that one? So I've got our pregnancy high-risk guidelines here. Pull that up. Anybody over... 35 years old, according to our guideline, needs to have that secondary diagnosis of supervision of an elderly <laughs> pregnant mama. So her age is important on this tricky one too. So remember, as you're looking at any of these pregnancy codes, if you see anybody 35 plus, then you're gonna have an OO code. 
like, I don't know, it's like 911 in reverse, but it's 900. So I have to associate. So that's how I could remember 900 instead of 911. <laughs> yes, it says geriatric pregnancy. Yes. Isn't that funny? Yep. I mean, women can have babies all the way up to their 60s sometimes. It's even further, but, you know, as long as they're menstruating, still releasing eggs, I guess they become higher risk at 35. And call it geriatrics. It's so funny. It's so funny. All right, let's head over to CPT book. This one is always a favorite in coding. Um, they will ask you a question on the exam from this particular CPT code. I bet it'll be there. Um, it's because the CPT code descriptor is written a little wrong. Um, very different from its natural way of being written. So just looking at these um, codes, I can see that we're at least dealing with two items. Thanks, ESP. Yep. We can throw some of this stuff away because this, yep, we can't do the 03 with the 110. That's just never going to happen. That's a do not. And then our 04 cannot be coded with the 00 or the 03. We have some more do nots about that one. So those two are just our garbages. So what they want to know is, do we know how to code what's remaining? If if we coded A, how many excisions, how many things would we have removed if we have this code with this one times two? How many items just for the 1700s would we have removed? There you go, Mean. Mean, are you back from your vacation? You're ready to take your exam, right? Good job. And then if we did code um, our 17110, we would have had how many lesions? We could have had, yay. So glad you're back. I hope you had a great time. You have been missed. Hey, Jill. How's it going? So, yep, Annie's correct. We could have done up to 14 for this one. I like knowing the numbers before I look at the question. That way I can just pick the question out easily. So this one right here, the 004, how many lesions could we have in this one? What's the number? Any codes usually with the plus symbol in front of them are the ones that you can times. The ones without the plus symbol in front of them are usually the ones you cannot. There's always exceptions to the rule, but most of the time these are the ones with the plus symbol that you can times. So our 17004 is up to 15 or more. It will be 15 or more, whole bunch of those. And then this 10 is the same one as up here. It'd have to be 14. Okay. Up to 14. No more than 14, but up to 14. So we're looking for 3 or 14 or 15 and 14 things. So when we look at our question, we 
we've got 10 and 16, which will match because this is 15 plus, and this is 14 minus. So our 16 will go right there. Our 14 will go right there. Matches the numbers. We don't have to worry about being wrong or anything. Does great. So yes, D is our answer. Now the issue with the 103 is because this times is written a little funky because it says second through 14, but that doesn't mean it covers all second through 14. This means we have to times it. If we have three lesions, we would code this one first, then we would code this one times two. If we had 10 lesions altogether, we would code this one first, then this one times nine. Once we reach the 14, we would end up not going over 14. Once we go to 15, we're going to come down here and only code this one. If we had 99 of these lesions that we removed, it would all be just this code, only by itself. Because 15 plus more goes right here. That CPT code descriptor is written weird. Um, anything else that has ever been an add-on code, each is the first word. On any other ones, you can go through the entire book and find a million of them, and each is your very first word. It's ridiculous how they wrote this one up to, or whatever, second through 14. So I got rid of second through 14. I just put up to 14, but each should be each so that you know you times it by each additional one. So yes. They love picking on this one because that CPT code descriptor is written weird. And I just keep a little run and list of everything that would have been the correct answer. So this one was the 04. Yeah, for 16 lesions. So I hope that's helpful. All right, let's go see about this one. We've got, I see that O2 is in two of the answers, so I would go straight to O2. 11, 6, Eleven, six. Hey Michelle, how's it going? You okay? ESP, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little crazy. That one's very rough. I hope I helped a little bit. I'll keep explaining it. Arms, trunks, and legs. Yes, mean. 11, 6. 11, 6, oh, 2. Sorry, I'm slow. It, turning. Yep, we are doing... Ben excisions of malignant lesions. So remember how I was talking earlier today, how they love list? One of their questions will be what's, which one of these is not a malignant lesion? Well, you've got a list here of the ones that are malignant lesions. They love lists. There's four of them here. They'll swap out one of them and put in something from the list of benign lesions which is here and they'll put in maybe that CIC word because that's benign but not a lot of people know what that word is and they'll squeeze it in here as maybe answer number B and they'll put in basal cell carcinoma then put in that CIC word then the next one is melanoma and in this other squamous cell and they might not even say carcinoma they might leave that off and then you got to pick which one it is and you know unless you know where those little lists are it's easier to go to those lists and just check them off one at a time so anyway they love those lists
but yes, we are removing some cancerous items from our arms, legs, and trunk. What's our guideline for removing malignancy things? Can we treat it like that 1700 thing where it's up to 14 or 16? We only code one code for 16 items we remove when it's malignant. Magpie, what are you doing, girl? Magpie, Magpie. You want to go see Grandma? Magpie. When it's malignant, you have to code each thing you remove, every single one of them, because it's going for biopsy. So um, that's the guideline I was thinking about, was that we would have to code each one. And our difference is going to be our 51 and our 52. And there isn't any, hey, magpie, any thing here that says do not use anything. So let's go to our 1200 and see what our differences are in our 51 and 52. So our 12, oh, 51 and 52 so it's just going to be a size so anything bigger than a 2.5 will be in 52 so just look for a number and see if it's bigger than 2.5 and our layer closure is a three, ooh, 0.5. Means rolling on the C. 11644. The lesion was only one with the margins making it all 3.5 and we're on the forehead. We weren't on any arms, legs, or trunk, were we? Nope. Second code is for layer closure. Yep. Yep. Mean is right. She's got her body parts. That's all we needed to know the difference of. We'll see if Magpie wants out. Magpie, you want out? You want out? Bar of soap. Mm -hmm. oh. He's gonna have to get a bar of soap in his mouth. <laughs> I was just checking on Travis. C is your answer. Right? It wasn't a, one of the codes that we were similar. Don't get wrapped up into it too hard. We knew that we were in arms, legs, and trunk. And our first sentence said we were forehead. So that means you can get rid of those all right away. We weren't even nowhere near there. And that only makes C. You wouldn't even need to look anything up because you know you're going to eliminate the arms and trunk area anyway. So you don't need to look up anything. Just looking up the arms and trunk gave us a way to get rid of everything. And we just go pick the one that's on the forehead. So I like the 48s. You know me. I would run to that code, see if there's any do nots or do's. What would we do with this code? 
Acupuncture. Oh, yeah. Acupuncture is cool. What page in the CPT book is acupuncture? I think it's back here with the OT and PT home infusion. It's in the back. It's in the back. I know it's back here. I already have some notes on acupuncture because somebody had a question for 24. Mm. Acupuncture's there. I've got acupuncture on 838. Is that it? 838. Where did it go? Oh, that's mean. Okay, so this is what I've got for some needles for acupuncture. Some of them are, let's see, that's nutritional therapy. Where is it? The acupuncture right here. So the first two are without electrical stimulation. The next set is with electrical stimulation is for the next two add-on codes. So just knowing, get my books out of the way, whether it has electrical stimulation or not, we've got our initial, and then this one's without stimulation, and then this one's with the initial 15 minutes, and then if it's longer than that, with the electricity, we would add it over here. Um, so it all depends on whether you've got electricity or not. And one of your add-on codes is initial. I mean, the second code down here, but see how it's indented underneath the mama code? This is one mama code, but it's without stimulation. And then the child code is the initial for electrical stimulation. So very interesting. And then we could add that add-on code with this one. It only goes with the 13. You'll have some do nots that you keep up with. That's super helpful. And then I had this chart written out from somebody else I was working with to help them figure out some answers to some questions. Maybe that'll help mean. Let's see, we had 40 minutes will be three units. Hmm. I got 45 as three units. I wonder why. I wonder why. I have to keep looking at it to see if I got my numbers right. But I believe everything is done on a 15 minute increment. So it would be hard to get to 40 minutes, right? Because we, we've got the fives. I don't know. I have to do my 15s over and over again to see if I got it right. But everything, even the add-ons are all 15 so 30 would be another 15, 15 is 30. And then another 15 is going to be our 45. So 40 minutes. It depends on the guideline. If we can, how much time has to go elapse before we can start counting at 15. If we haven't hit the 15 minute mark, can we code it? But we went 10 minutes. Um, or do we have to wait the whole 15 minutes? So there might be some sort of um, rule there that says we have to make it the whole 15 minutes first before we can build the 45, if that makes sense. Hey, little foot. Sure, Littlefoot, um, you can book that September um, 
session for tutoring. And while you're booking it, you can get a message in the tutoring. There's a place to write your notes and stuff, whatever you want. And um, I read those and you can tell me I need it for this day on this time or by this date. And um, that's what everybody else does. And then I can move it manually to the week that you need or the day that you need. So like, let's see, like, oh, this is a good one I can use because, look, see, there's a message, notes from client. I want to give back. This is for you to raffle off. Thank you for the help. That was really nice. So um, that kind of stuff, you can leave the notes there and I read them and go through them and make sure I put everybody where they need to be. Just if I opened it up. I would never be able to work in somebody who comes in and says, I need you this week or next week um, and fit everybody. anybody else in who needs something urgently for some reason. Anyway, so I try to keep it as open as possible, but then still have people in there where they need it. No problem. Little foot. Laser. 40 minutes. How will I code? I'm thinking 40 minutes. We would just code those two. I wonder if there's a way during the 15 minute increments use this. Only code one code for each 15 minute increments. Only code, one initial code to report per day. I don't think they give you very much guidelines about it. Dry needling, trigger point, acupuncture. I'm assuming we got to get a lot closer, I don't know, before we build it times three, times two. because we didn't meet or exceed that level to build that level. We met and we exceeded it for here for 40 minutes. So if I apply that same rule, meeting or exceeding, then I would build here. So I think 45 minutes goes here, but anything less would go there. Meet and exceed. Thanks, Twinkle. Sixteen minutes for thirty minutes is all it has to be. Do they give some examples in there? Sometimes they give examples of how you would build. I just don't see it right now in front of me. Only one code may be reported for each fifteen minute increment. Fifteen minute increments is personal face-to-face -face contact with the patient and not the duration of the acupuncture needle placement. So it means total time face-to-face -face with the patient, not the total time of the needle placement. And that might be one difference. Very interesting. Oh, you forgot to enter the date? Okay. Okay, little foot. How do you get into the raffle? So if y'all could, let me find a, a sticky note here. Just email me and put raffle on the subject line at medical coding by Jen at gmail.com. Just email me with raffle in the 
in the subject line and I will add y'all to the raffle. That was Jolie. Y'all remember her? She um, passed a long time ago. And um, I forget what day this was when she bought this. Let's see. She bought them on May 9th. She bought two days in September to raffle off. So that's what I got coming up. All right. Path and lab path and medicine is hard. Yes. Our next um, workshop is going to be on July 17th. It will cover OB and lab path and E&M. Medicine is all over the place. It really is. And um, raffle go kart. Um, I raffle off if people buy free tutoring hours for people. And then I raffle off free um, copies of my notes too. People buy sections and say you can give these sections away, that kind of thing. So, yep. And then every purchase of the what has been on the exam in the last 45 days because you guys create it, all those go to giving away people free tutoring hours or free notes that are needed that if people are in need and need it. And they do get given away. I promise. I promise I've given so much hours and stuff given away for um, those purchases and other people's donations too. So super helpful. Okay. Did y'all figure out an answer on this one? Let's see. We are doing a cystic gross hematuria. So they ended up having a... Yeah, a cystoscope with a green light laser ablation. So, which one is going to be your green light ablation laser to the prostate? Yes, MK is so going to pass. I guarantee if she got an exam A, B, or H, she would have passed 100%. Just unfortunate luck. Yep. Are we going to do our 04 or our 24? Not necessarily. If we, if this procedure is totally separate from this procedure, then we would add it. Fear gate. A is your answer. We had our forty eight with the twenty four. For this one and the 24 is in one of your throwaways which always points to the correct answer I kind of like that how when we figure out 48 is definitely what we want to keep one of your throwaways has the same answer as ones that you're keeping that can point you in a correct direction on which one you're going to code to is handy dandy Speak of the devil, lab and path. So I like the 06 and 07. Let's go see what those codes are about. 872. 872. 8, 8, 06. Oh. Six and O two. 
06 and 07. So we've got a special stain or we have a fluorescent fast stain. It's about staining, huh? What kind of stain do we have? We also have two different diagnoses. You could always figure out which diagnosis was correct to tell you which answer it was to if you felt like it. But we are looking for a special stain. Lucky there. And we do have a CPT code that says special stain. <laughs> Yeah, I never did look at B or A. I was just looking for these two because they were super similar. Our 07 says special stain. So I like D. What do you guys think? Her name was... looking for when Littlefoot said her name was Tasha R. Okay. Tasha R. Tasha R. Oh, great. Yep, I like D too. Yep, D is your answer. Very good. All right, we got muscular skeletal again. Let's see. I see we've got two O eights, and then we have our tens. The 54 modifier and the LT could also help us. LT's in everything, so there's just a few that have 54 in it that could help eliminate some stuff. So that's surgical care only. Very interesting. Wondering why we would be using that with the 51 modifier for multiple procedures. It just looks out of place, don't you think? Let's see. Don't know. Let's see. Our 275, 10, and 08 are... Travis! Travis! Come here! Yeah, you're being loud and inappropriate. I can hear every word you're saying. I didn't say what I yawned. No, that was not that was not a yawn. Five oh eight. Close procedure, close procedure. Both are for treatment of the femoral fracture. Distal ends, medial or lateral. One's without manipulation and one is with manipulation. That's our only difference. Did they manipulate it? It was reduced, which is an AKA term for manipulation. So we are going to keep our tens. So we'll get rid of our O8s. And then our only difference is our 62 and our 52. It says the knee was reduced. That's manipulation. They said it twice. 
appropriate position and was reduced into position and elevated non-surgically. So they just jerked it around. 27552, requiring anesthesia or 62 is also required anesthesia, but one of them's for knee dislocation. The other one is for patella dislocation. Are we doing the patella or the knee dislocation? Long cast was provided. What is this type of fracture? <laughs> Correct. B is your answer. That is our knee. There was no mention of the patella, just the knee that was dislocated. Perfect. Good job. Having those opened and closed um, circled like this is super helpful. I love circling the closed procedures with the word open with the orange color and then the open is with green. So that helps keep me straight. And then through the skin when it's percutaneous, I just underline so that it shows up different because that's through the skin. All right. We got an anesthesia one. Let's go to the front of the book. We've got two 60s and two 66s. So zero, zero, five, 60 is anesthesia on the heart. What is our 566? It's down here, anesthesia for a cabbage. Coronary artery bypass. Let's see, are we doing a cabbage? I bet we're doing a cabbage. I bet we are. Yep, coronary bypass. We're doing a cabbage. So definitely we'll keep those 66s. We can get rid of those too. One interesting thing, I'll, I'm going to tell y'all after this question about these peas. Um, they're kind of cool, but we've got the same answer in both. We just need to know, do we add a 51 modifier or a P3 modifier? Yeah, and P3 would be an appropriate qualifying circumstance for anesthesia. Um, anesthesia or to do a cabbage on a mildly sick patient, especially somebody who has uncontrolled hypertension, something like that, would definitely go with RC. Without even looking at anything on our question, we picked out that answer. C is correct. Now, one cool example that I've got is your qualifying circumstances are on page 77 of your CPT book. You've got all of these P's. They're not going to use them very often on the exam, but you might get one question with it. But this cool one here about declared brain dead patient um, was an interesting one because just like that qualifying circumstance for your extreme age, this 99100 that we use for patients who are under one year of age and or over 70, we use it on all the anesthesia codes for extreme age patients if, but there's an if, if the CPT code descriptor does not have an age in it. So let's say this one right here. This anesthesia for all esophagus procedures, if that's it, it does not have an age on it. So if we had a 70-year-old or somebody who's under one, we would use that 99100 code. But right here, like on anesthesia for an esophagus, this one has an age in it where it says age 
is one year or older, we would not use that code because it already has an age in the descriptor. A lot of times it'll tell you in the do nots right here. You see how they did it on this one? But this one, they didn't tell you not to use it. Oh, this is one year or older. So we wouldn't even use that one for that code anyway. But pay attention to those do nots. The one that I was thinking about with that P6 where it comes up that you don't use that one was cool because it came up on a question this time. And it's right here. This code for 01990. This is to harvesting organs from a brain dead patient. You see how this brain dead patient is in the CPT code? We would not add P6 to this particular code because it's redundant. We don't need to tell the insurance company that the patient's brain dead, which this P6 does. Because the purpose of adding modifiers is to change your CPT descriptor from what it has. And this one has brain dead patient in it already. So there's no need in P6, but they don't have a do not there. So that's cool right there. You got 100% on muscular skeletal? You rock, girl. Good job. I hope it's all those sessions I spent all those nights going through with you guys on those uh, super hard um, muscular skeletal ones back here in the back. The, the ones with the medial and the lateral. Y'all remember those? Oh my gosh, they're, they're awful. Those meniscus repairs, those things are terrible. Because you know you're going to end up with one. Whatever. Oh, I'm in, I'm in the lungs. That's why I'm not seeing it. I know it's right back here. These, these traumatic things. The partials. Yeah. I know that has to be helpful learning the differences between these and with the civectomy. We, we done some really good lives on those. So I know that had to have helped some mean. If age is there, we don't add it correct. But yeah, the code that we've had before, there's a lot of codes in here that have ages in the descriptor. And you don't want to add any qualifying circumstances to those at all. Let me find another one. Um, I know there's something around here somewhere. Because they got ages in the descriptor. We want to make sure we don't use those. Right here, here's one. This one's younger than one year of age. This is 00834. We would not use um, the 99190 on it because of that. They do have some that say they're over uh, 72. Some of the CPT code surgeries are for older patients. I've seen it. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. It's a small section, though. You should be able to find it pretty quickly. I think it's one of the back ones back here that has something to do with somebody over 70. And you don't need that 99 modifier because it is of an older patient. Things like that. So just make sure there's no age in this CPT descriptor. And remember that if it's a child code, of course there's not going to be an age here, but the age will be in the mama code. So go look at the mama code first. And if there's no age in the mama code, then you're good to go to add it. So that one right there is one, the anesthesia for one that's younger than one year of age. 
and I put this at the top of my header less than one year or greater than 70 add that that's at the top so that we remember that anyway hope that's helpful but along with that don't forget you don't have to add the p3 or the p6 to things that would be redundant um, if the cpt code descriptor has it in it just like that brain dead patient if the cpt code descriptor has brain dead in it you don't need to add the p6 so pick the answer without the p6 all right are we where are we at 99475 is down twice we're in e and m territory i think which is always fun yep we got home health care plan oversight services so could we add a the seven six with any of this probably not let me check messages and see where we're at i got that one in cases you did which one did you get in cases mk was it the anesthesia or the brain dead hey tear she is taking school for medical coding and she's struggling i'm so sorry just any chapter questions that's where you need to stay in all the lectures and the book learning and the videos and the websites to go to are all overwhelming stick with the questions at the end the chapter reviews your quizzes stay with those circumcisions are okay you just have to pay attention to your parentheticals they play a big role in those Tricky chapter. I'll add brain dead. One P I C U brain dead. She said the brain dead was on there. The muscular skeletal ones was in the cases. The rotator cuff stiffness. Some of those rotator cuff ones are very difficult because they're you got to know whether your graft is a bone graft or if they're putting in a steel plate. Those kinds of things for sure. So let's see. Is this one just having a supervision of a home health agency? Don't think that one's going to work, huh? If we're under that one. That's the 374. Let's try the 474. Maybe I'll be in better area. Too much devices yeah there can be for sure Doctor Strange, the new Doctor Strange movie is going on. I'm like, does that doesn't sound like it's PG-13 or lower? It's getting awful scary in there. But that's good. They're doing okay. All right. So we've got patient who had initial inpatient pediatric critical care services 
and then also on the 17th had something else. So how would we code the 27th and the 28th days of services? Well, that's two days of service. So you know your answer is simply, yep, sometimes it's easier just to count, just to see. <laughs> what are they asking? What do they want me to code? It's two days worth of services. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. For sure. A couple of things about PEDS while we're in this section. Um, on page 59, there's this list of items that you can code with um, neonatal care. You can do um, yeah, umbilical line catheters, um, vascular punctures. You can do intubation. You can do um, IV access through the umbilical cord line. They're all specialty things. A lot of things in critical care in the hospital, like we don't bill for every time we intubate an adult or um, do IV access for an adult. It's just included in the critical care services. But for your peds, we do have a list here. And one of their questions, several of their questions, could be related to this 59-page list, like which one of these codes, A, B, C, or D, will be included in neonate care? And you just go through the list and find the one that is not on there and choose that as the answer or something like that. Just be aware of that page and that list. It could be very helpful during your exam, for sure. Back to lab and path. Some of my favorite codes in Lab and Path. I don't know why it's so fuzzy. It's being so fuzzy. All right, there we go. So 303, 6 and 7, 803. And don't tell them what pages these are on because these are like sort of hard to find because they're I don't know if they're out of sequence or if if I don't know they just they're all over the place presumptive test there you go that's a really good thing to do just any simple thing they don't have to break HIPAA they ain't got to come up with a reason you just got to tell what kind of accommodation you need on anything Super helpful. Yep, we're on six of four. And having these one word di differences from my notes can be a lifesaver for sure because then you're only at looking for the difference of the six and seven, which is eyes only or instrument. So we're just going to search our question for instrument or eyes only. So it does say they're using an analyzer. So that's definitely not eyes only. So we can get rid of A and D. Now that we know we're definitely here, would we add, would we pick an answer with four CPT codes in it or would we pick a, an answer with two CPT codes based off AAPC's history? Yeah, it would just be two codes. So these presumptive urine dips is what they are, are just urine screens, and you don't have to code for each drug. You're not going to code for every single one does not get a CPT code. They're trying to make you think that you need to do that because they're listing out four of these codes in a minute. Finish watching Doctor Strange, baby. I'm still doing a live. No. They want hot tub time. And um, that's all included. These pre presumptive screens will, will, will give you a drug screen for multiple things. Um, people were bringing those home, and there was a TikTok rage earlier last year about 
putting it in a Red Bull or those energy drinks and watching the meth turn positive. And they would have little squares that would do all kinds of drugs. So those little dipsticks do a lot more than just this stuff. So don't get caught up in thinking you have to code every little thing in the question. That's there to confuse you. These do a lot. They do a lot of drugs. Yep, they don't ask for that. They More than anything, AAPC wants to make sure you're not an overcoder. You won't code too much. They want to make sure you are reasonable in your coding skills. Yeah, it's just two answers. All right, so this next one is kind of like a case. We're going to code which E and M. We're going to code which procedure, and then we're going to code the diagnosis on a scenario. Okay, but it's only going to be one scenario. So first thing we got to figure out is our level of E and M. We may get time or MDM for this one, or we may not. We may just get a diagnosis and see whether they wrote a prescription or not. So let's just see. <laughs> No yikes. No yikes. We can do this. We can do this. Those are ulcers. Very good. All right. We got lots of D's. Probably a difference between those two closer ones. You know, those are super close. And then right here, we've got two of the O2s, and it would just be knowing whether we can add another code or not. So I don't think it'll be too hard. So let's see. They are here for a lesion on the shoulder. And they do a biopsy. So people come into the office all the time and have a shave off, a shave biopsy. Yep, that's handy dandy. told to call back in 10 days. This is like a, a little uh, Q-tip we dip in a solution or it can be on a Q-tip already for us and we just use it to stop the stop the bleeding. So in case saying that she thinks it's not going to be the O2, but 13 is for shave. Let's see. Let me go over there and see what's going on. And 113. We are doing some shaving. Yep, and our size is, is it good for that one? Did they say it's a size? Did they say anything about a size? Mm. How do we build the O? Oh, oh, oh yeah, for the for just the shaving. But it says for trunk, arms, and legs, we are on the shoulder area. What is our one 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 O two? What is that sucker?
that one is Tjinktul, which is also a shave. And it says biopsy. The other one is a excision, right? Is it an excision to shave off or is it a 113? This is a lesion. Ah, we do have a lesion, right? This one is for a biopsy. Mm. The one 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 two Hmm. I still think it's the one 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 oh two because I don't have a size. I don't have like three point two to be able to do and I know it says lesion. So I, I think it's D. So definitely wouldn't add to it <clears throat> for each separate lesion. I think there's only one lesion, right? So only one. So I think it's D. The diagnosis R48 between R48 and R49. Let me get there. R D D D D. A, B, C, D, 48 and 49. 49 is neoplasm of unspecified disorder. It's not going to be our 49, huh? Or is it? 49.02, we might, because we don't know, right? 02, 48. Oh, 05 is skin unspecified this yeah so crazy and then our our office visit what do you guys think on the office visit I know MK's opinion did we do anything else besides the procedure? We didn't see them for their allergies or for their weight. Probably didn't even get a blood pressure for this visit. It's just to do the biopsy. So you only get to be able to bill for the biopsy. So there won't be an office visit for that one. So I like those two. Now, 449, it's of the skin, right? Or shoulder area, irregular, black on one side, not symmetrical. It's got to be of the skin, right? Because the other one is 492. Is of the bone, soft tissue, and skin? Ugh. And then the other one is 485.5 and it says just uncertain behavior but it's got all oh look at look at the the we got all tail end stuff why would we have that underneath there i don't i don't like r85 Correct, Tiffany. So when the patient is there for procedure only, yep, we do not charge for our office visit. It's called double dipping. Yep. We will just bill for the procedure because there was no evaluation. There was no exam from head to toe of the patient. There was no history taken and there was no decision for the patient's health care. So we didn't have three components. So we couldn't bill for an office visit. If he went over the patient's meds, 
um, their current weight and blood pressure and then made a medical decision based off these factors, then we could bill for that. But there was nothing done but the biopsy, so we don't bill for an office visit. Yep, it's a good lesson. So, uh, 49.2 looks weird with the bone, but soft tissue, but I like that one because we're in the shoulder. Shoulder is mostly like just skin right over bone. Mm. So let's see. We do have none. Perfect. Patient uh, presents for a biopsy of a neoplasm on the shoulder. A separate ENM visit was not performed. Perfect. Then our biopsy, let's see, what does it say? It says <clears throat> the shave technique. Shave as a biopsy, not as a shave excision. The different methods can be used. Only one is a biopsy taken. So the word biopsy trumps the lesion word that was in there. Very good. And our diagnosis is D. Until pathology comes back and identifies it as a neoplasm, we can't code it. So we just report it as unspecified disorder or behavior. Un and whatever behavior and un, un, uncertain behavior of other sites no uncertain behavior of the skin versus the we call it a neoplasm the neoplasm was what we were supposed to pick over. Yeah, okay, well, they're both neoplasms of uncertain behavior of the skin, of just uncertain behavior, and it doesn't mention skin at all. Huh. That's the difference between our 48s and our 49. Uncertain behavior of other and unspecified sites neoplasms of the uncertain behavior very crazy neoplasms of uncertain behavior of other sites this one's just of behavior of other sites we were able to pick out what site hmm. very weird It's tricky. That 49.2, I'm still not 100% clear other than unspecified behavior. They both have unspecified behavior, uncertain behavior versus unspecified behavior. So the uncertain word versus unspecified. Huh. Is your two differences in those codes the 48 says uncertain where the 49 says unspecified I'm sure there's a guideline there <laughs> this one's very hard this one was is in the um, I found this one in Probably one of the cases for um, if you wanted a specialty certificate in um, family practice, if you wanted to be a super coder in family practice, I believe I found this example in those examples of questions. So to answer your question, no, this won't be on the CPC exam. It is a specialty one, but individually, 
them broken up, like just knowing that if a patient is here for just a biopsy and you don't do an E&M on it, that could potentially be on the exam in and itself. Now, the differences between these two diagnoses would show up on something like a CRC exam, but I do not believe it would be on the CPC exam. Um, this procedure could be on the CPC exam, but I highly doubt it. I don't know if I've seen them do a difference between that shave biopsy and this shave biopsy on the exam. It would probably be more of a COC thing, but, or the family practice one. But definitely this would be there. I could so see that one being on there. Yeah, because that's just, if they're just here for a biopsy, we don't do an E&M visit because you need the history exam and MDM. So that's the one part that you should know. Intigmentary has questions, was on my AAPC home exam. Did it? I just like to show you some that are a little bit more complicated, get you used to looking at those so that if your exam is full of easier exam questions, then you'll think my stuff was way harder and this other stuff was way easier. <laughs> just every once in a while. I don't do it often, but I think they're fun to do and discuss and talk about it. I know MK, but like I said, this one wasn't, you knew right away the, the CPC exam question. You knew this one was none. You knew that. It's just some of this is tricky for sure. We don't have a size, so don't pick a code where the differences are sizes. We could clearly see in these 1300s that there was sizes involved. So... You'll know now, if there's no size in the question, then you have to be in the wrong area. So don't pick those that are the sizes. Go see if something else works. And again, we've got our similarities. We've got the same answer in the question. So I would have immediately eliminated these and wouldn't even looked them up if you hadn't. So I would have just looked to see if we only did one lesion, it's just this answer. And if we did two, or we would have had the add-on code, but we only had one. So make it easy on yourself. When they have the same answer down, go to that and see if that matches, then great. Go with it. Don't go looking for trouble. You might find it in the other codes. And this was difficult. This is rough. I'm like uncertain or unspecified. Those two differences, I'll have to look up and do more of an examination on those two to see how I can explain that better to you guys. Because there's got to be some sort of rule about stating it being uncertain between that and being unspecified. There's something there. I just don't know it off the top of my head and can look it up and I'll figure out a way to tell y'all how you would know the difference between those two codes because of the way they're written based off what they got right here. For sure. I'm sure I can. It's just unknown behavior becomes... Oh, I'm going to kill myself over this one. The unspecified. Unknown equals unspecified. Unknown. I'll get it slimmed down to where we know each time we see unknown, it's unspecified. If it's uncertain, we would need to code it because of what kind of AKA terms. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Units were involved. You think it's in medicine? We've got a lot of units in medicine for sure. The um, could it have been in 
the the infusions where you do a lot of units over there in that particular area. Um, some of the infusions are by units, I wonder. I wonder, wonder, wonder. Nope, those are by the hour. That's by time. Mm, units. What would be in units? Physical therapy is done by body regions. It's not done by um, how many muscles or bones they crack. It's done by regions like cervical regions, thoracic regions, that kind of stuff. Units. Units, units. Patient was on dialysis. Okay. Let's see. So we had, we've got, uh, Travis, units, units, units. Is it the, not dialysis, but the other thing that they do along with dialysis? It's the, um, I forget what the name of it is. The EEGs, a lot of those, the differences are whether it's a tech who does it or a qualified healthcare professional is your only differences um, besides unmonitored, with monitoring, or continuous real-time show. But just knowing whether they're... Who's supposed to be doing the EEG is helpful to know on that particular area. Units. Nerve conjunction test. Those aren't units either. Nope, 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 nope. Some of them are difficult. They always do the swallow test. It seems like that one's always on the exam. And some of this stuff is just simply knowing whether you're in an artery or a vein. That's so helpful. Then you just have to decide whether you're limited unilaterally or bilateral in a complete study. So it's just the fine details. Usually it's pretty easy once you see it. Sometimes it's hard to see. When it says without something, I just put a line through it so I don't have to worry about it. This is the only one with the monitoring. I don't know if that's helpful, but it seems like it would be to me. Um, units. Catheterization. That's the mitra valve. I saw guidelines, CPT questions. Oh, did you? You found one in your book looking at it? I'm telling you the very beginning of those guidelines and then the very end where it says they're not coded separately or are coded separately, this is where they're getting their questions from. That's the very tail end, right before you code a section. There's usually this paragraph that says not separately reportable that means we, you don't code it separate it's all in there that's where they get a lot of their questions from their guidelines and then at the very beginning of their guideline when they list how many things are in their their little procedures what they're doing inside of them and they list four or five things that's where they're getting those questions I know how you got the 85 encoding guidelines. It's all that tutoring you did with me. You'd be surprised how much I wheedle into your brain to let you know what the guidelines are around the questions that we do. So I'm not surprised at all. You always did really good with the guidelines for sure. 
What about this? Um, we'll do one more emergency room one here, and then we'll go for the night. What's tonight? Tonight's Friday night. So I'll be back on Monday night to do another live um, on TikTok. Don't forget, guys, to um, thanks for all the shares, six shares and 2,000 likes on the chat for the Discord um, study rooms. We've got tons of practice questions there for sure that are super helpful. Um, you just download that Discord app. It looks like Mickey Mouse's Bridges, but I guess it's a video game. And we have practice rooms with practice questions and stuff. So it's super helpful. Some people are even selling books, um, that kind of stuff in there, uh, med terms, all kinds of stuff. I put a good one in the other day that was pretty cool on the exam. So always adding some information in there. Let's see. These two six fives are closer than anything else. So let's go see what's going on with those codes. Three, six, five, five, six. Three, six. Five, six, and our six, nine. Totally different things, so should be too bad. So we've got a pick catheter versus an access device, a central access device. You're going to do great. You had opioid withdrawals with dependency. F09. Yep, could be very well. So what are we doing? On this patient. Are we doing, let's see, the, the pick? or the central venous catheter on this one. What do you guys think? Or am I in the wrong place altogether? Does anything look like it's matching? Do we need to go look at some other codes as possible answers? If we're not matching 100%, let's look at our closest code. Because it looks like all they're doing is giving some fluids in a jugular vein, which has to be done by the doctor. Five, five, eight was on your exam. So what's everybody think this answer is on this one? A, B, C, or D are 60, 60, 600 is um, a needle into a vein, and then our 6410 is, next one over, 6410 is 
a venipuncture. That one's a venipuncture, so we know that one's not it. Jugular vein is for CVC. Mm -hmm. This one says it's under the header of IV. This one says it's for a device, insertion, device, insert, and 69. is an insertion also of another device. So all we did was we gave fluids in the jugular vein. So we did introduction of fluids. We didn't insert any devices. All they did was give some IV fluids. There was no, and they discharged her. They just went way aggressively by putting the, the access in the neck. Yeah, D is going to be your answer. So now you can go to 36000, which I didn't have very much notes on this one other than add administration or withdrawal of fluids but we can use um, AAPC's words here look at this Trundleberg position they got gave it a proper name hold on stop touching our stuff Right. We can put that word below that code. We can also say that all they did was we can use the jugular vein also. And they gave them one liter of IV fluids. We can add all of those words right there to this particular code and have that example there. That way, the next time you see it, you'll know that this is, could be a jugular vein IV one liter of fluids administration. Because knowing it's non-sequel or whatever, it's not very helpful. We should... Add a few more things there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, I hope tonight was helpful. I'm sorry it was a little bit higher complications, but it, I think it's interesting to do some of the more difficult ones too to help out. But not all of them were were bad. It definitely, it was really good to know that you don't need an E and M visit to go with any procedures. That's super handy for the CPC exam. We uh, did some labs. Now you know you don't code all the different drugs that you're coding for. It's going to be just a dipstick code, so that's super helpful to know for sure. You can count how many days that they're wanting you to code and pick out the answer easy on this one that was handy dandy to know and then we had some modifiers we could have gotten rid of or kept based off of the situation that can help you pick out the answer quickly hello like travis again, hello james travis james is not going to let me and this game goes up to 15 players and we have a spare remote can i play can i play minecraft with him i'll be there in just five seconds say good night to everybody Good night. I hope this has been helpful. <laughs> I will see y'all again on Monday night. I will be doing some book prep this weekend. So um, probably not tonight because I got the boys here. But um, tomorrow night I will do some book prep for ICD-10. Getting it ready for the CPC exam. I've already done the cancer section and diabetes 
and the uh, sepsis. But we can add to this, I need to work up the OB section a little bit more with some more examples, and then we'll do some burns. So y'all can watch me update notes for guidelines for the ICD-10 book. We don't have but five questions in that section, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but I definitely could use some more sections done up with some examples in, in that area for sure. And I will find out more info on what the differences are in our unspecified and uncertain so that we can tell when we would code that crazy difference right there for sure. So maybe that will be helpful. Anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow night, but it will be on YouTube. Just direct live on YouTube where y'all get a bigger screen view too, so it's kind of cool. But... um until then, I'll see y'all Monday night. It was on the exam. That's cool to know. You're very welcome. Tomorrow evening, probably, uh, probably about this time, somewhere around um, 6 to 7 o'clock um, Arizona time zone. So later in the evening. Anyway, it's only 9 p.m. my time here, so I would probably start it around 7, 6 or 7 my time. I'll let y'all know. I'll be in chat in our Discord group to let y'all know, too. Hey, Red. It's good to see you. Hey, Twinkle. You see, circled it with pencil. That's cool. I'm so glad I'm finding some cool codes that were on your exam to go over. That's super helpful. All right, guys. I'll see y'all later.